So I'm sure it's going to be really hard for you to figure out which glam rock hit that this Inspired By song was inspired by. Could it happen to be a band named similar to a dinosaur? Perhaps. Perhaps. Anyway, folks, this was a lot of fun to put together. You know, to me, glam rock really is kind of more just regular blues rock and roll. Although there was a period of time where those glam rock guys, even like David Bowie and T-Rex, oh, I gave away the name, um, did some things that had more soul type of music, soul influence to them, and more acoustic guitars. For this one, this Inspired By series, I really went after more of the blues rock and roll type of thing. And I gotta tell you, one of the things that I found really hard and challenging to do, and why it was so fun actually to put this together, were two things. The first one was the rhythm. Things seem to be really laid back, kind of behind the beat, and I really have a hard time doing that a lot of times. So I really found this to be a great challenge to do that and just to really kind of exercise that groove muscle. Like so, so much of today's music is so on the grid that you kind of lose the bounce, if you will, or the swagger of some of these older types of tunes that were kind of just, just human beings being humans and playing as a group and having that kind of group time. So and the second thing that I went for was a cranked up amp sound. So no pedals again were we kind of used. Well, except for one, one pedal that you'll see for one of the guitar parts, but for the rhythm guitar part. For the rhythm guitar parts, I'm really just kind of using my brown face clone amp on the normal channel. That's kind of, kind of a similar flavor, I guess, to a Marshall sound. And that was really fun. And also something that I noticed that was kind of interesting and a little bit humbling was to play without any reverb. Just kind of have these kind of guitars straight and smack in your face and really try to find that groove. So the first guitar part is really based off of that blue shape that we're all kind of familiar with. We're in the key of E here. And that kind of power chord to the sixth on top and then the seventh on top. And for a blues, you might have more of a shuffle. But for this one, this is a little bit more of a bouncier rhythm. And you can see I'm really playing around and popping around on that sixth and flat seven sound. So I'm kind of calling out those little parts of that chord progression. And then we simply go to the four chord, the A. Back to the one chord, four chord, one chord, four chord, and five chord. Back to that kind of grooving little um, chord, chord I should say, sequence. And this is kind of something interesting you think about when you do kind of your chords in your songs. Try to make a little bit of a little motif or kind of a standout melody line with inside your chord progression. So in this one here, you can clearly hear. So it's a little bit of a signature line, if you will, inside of this song. And after that section, we're gonna to go to the G chord. Power chord to an A power chord. Back to that. Repeat that again. to that kind of riff again. And the song basically ends kind of the same way. We play a G, A, and then three hits on the E chord. So guitar part two really adds a little bit of a swagger, if you will, to the guitar lines. And this one's panned hard right. And all we're basically doing is taking this E shape up here. You might be familiar with this D shape. I'm just sliding it up. Your root happens to be underneath your third finger here. And I'm just playing a power chord, but kind of inverted. I'm playing the fifth on the bottom, the B, and the root on top C, <laughs> root on top E, to get that power chord sound. And this is more of a, a little bouncy part. And then when we go to that section where there's the A chord happening, I'm gonna come down here and I'm gonna play this. Two little stabs. And basically all I'm doing there is I'm playing off of the 
third, the C sharp, and the G, which is the seventh of an A7. So no longer am I playing that root and the fifth, I'm playing now the third and the flat seven, kind of that tritone. Really calls out that chord. And again, that's just really just two stabs. I shouldn't have done that rhythm, but you could if you wanted to. And then I just come back to this shape. And later on in the song, you'll hear that there's a little bit of a horn part that's panned to the left side that kind of mimics that sound playing the root note only. So for guitar part three, we're gonna have to pull out the secret sauce. The good old fuzz face. This happens to be a clone, but it sounds great. It does the same thing. Let's plug it in and learn guitar part three. So for this guitar part, I really was kind of going for a little bit of a signature line inside of the song as well. And this is panned hard left in the mix. And obviously we're employing a fuzz here, a fuzz face type of circuit. And if interesting, if you ever seen the original commercials if you will, for the fuzz face, like kind of the way they advertise it. I shouldn't say commercial, but the way they advertise it. They really were trying to say that you can make so many different sounds, and one of them even was the tuba sound. And you can really hear that. This has like a horn-like quality to it. And all that I'm doing here is I'm just playing off of that G to an F sharp to an E. And I'm kind of doing a pull-off, and I'm just letting the fuzz do its thing and just sustain that. fun with that, right? <laughs> and then to end the song, we're kind of doing the same thing with that hit. But playing it up an octave higher, where the first guitar part was down here, we're kind of playing it up here, this E power chord, just to end the song. So a lot of fun takeaways you can get from this music is really learn to find that groove. It's something that I'm still working on, but tell you what, it was really fascinating to try to recreate this type of vibe in a song and just to learn to play a little bit laid back. And something that we have to our advantage that we don't take advantage of often is the ability to actually record yourself and not only listen back, but also to see your waveforms. And you can actually see if you're on the beat, behind the beat, or ahead of the beat. So use your doll a little bit as a tool to help you learn your rhythm parts a little bit more. Now, as always, down in the description below, you can download these tracks for free. There's actually two tracks. The first one is the full band, so you can play along with these guitar parts that I showed you here. Or the second track is just basically the foundation with no guitars in it, so you can even make up your own guitar parts for it or play these guitar parts. So I hope you have fun. Enjoy your glam rock.